I'm Jonathan Rosen. I'm the editor of Next Book's Jewish Encounters series, and it's my pleasure to be here with Harold Kushner, who is the author of the 21st book in our series, uh, The Book of Job, When Bad Things Happened to a Good Person, uh, which is an allusion to his landmark 1981 bestseller, When Bad Things Happened to Good People. Uh, in some sense, uh, reading uh, the manuscript, talking to you about the book, uh, there's this very moving feeling that this book on Job brings you full circle uh, 30 years after you um, initially wanted to write about the role of God in, in human calamity. It closes the circle in a lot of ways. For one thing, coming back to Shulkin, who was the first publisher to put my book out, uh, goes back to the issues I raised 31 years ago and when bad things happen to good people, that is, what is God's role, gone into in much more theological depth. My previous book was really a counseling book. Let me say something to make you feel better. This is a book about the nature of God, what can we believe about God, and how do those beliefs shape how we respond to all the unfairness in the world. One of the things you write about at the very end of your book is how your own understanding has changed in 30 years. From the idea of a limited God, that really was a large part of mm -hmm. when bad things happen to good people, to the possibility, when you're writing now about the book of Job, that actually God is self-limiting and that it is really uh, more the conditions of the world as God wishes them to be. Well, that's exactly the, the personal growth I've undergone. I wrote When Bad Things Happen to Good People to advocate for a God where there were certain things he could not do. I think I made a case for that, but I also learned a lot of people were let down by that. They, they couldn't depend on God as much. They couldn't take God as seriously. It diminished their awe of God. And I didn't want to have that effect on people, so I think what I'm advocating in the new book is a God who imposes limits on himself. I spoke in New Orleans on the first anniversary of Hurricane Katrina, and I said to the audience there, you're wondering why God let this happen to you? I can give you the answer in one sentence. God is moral, nature is not. Nature is blind. Nature follows its own laws. Who you are, what kind of person you are, doesn't make any difference to nature. But God isn't like that. God is closer to the brokenhearted, closer to the generous, closer to the honest, not to protect them, but to affirm them, to be with them. One of the things you were telling me before when we spoke is that uh, Jewish culture itself, though it now seems to embody the arguing spirit of Job in the poem, initially misread the book, which is how it got canonized in the first place. Well, the, the real question is, how did this book ever find its way to the Bible? It, it is, it's not blasphemous, but it's challenging. It's profoundly challenging. Job is an angry, impatient, challenging man. His friends defend God. In the beginning, all they want to do is comfort. We understand this happened. You feel bad, of course. But God is good. God knows what he's doing. You're basically a good person. This is not the end of the story. It's the middle. You'll come out okay. When Job rejects that notion, they get a little bit testy. There is a strand in Judaism going back to Jacob receiving the name of Israel, one who struggles with God, one who wrestles with God. And that's the way we've always related to God. It's the way we relate to any important relationship, our parents, our mates, our children, our best friends, struggling, embracing, and arguing. The idea of the legitimacy of challenging God. There's an honored tradition. It's not considered blasphemous. It's not considered heretical. It's considered honest. I think that one of the anxiety in Judaism is that you would replace all the things you have to do, all the prescriptions, all the laws and codes, with an essence of God. That if you hold this idea of God in your mind, then you can uh, let go of these other things. I'm wondering how you balance that tension, since you've functioned for many years as a conservative rabbi. When you write, you actually are writing about the essence of God, and now for in this book, you're really writing about a figure who is the ultimate universal biblical figure, because he's not even a Jew. But Jonathan, look what's happened. We have emptied our lives of a lot of these ritual things anyway because we don't have that sense of the reality of God. It's not that they used to substitute for it. It's that if you don't believe in God, and if your neighbors aren't putting pressure on you to be observant, take that away, 
as we have done, and there's no reason to be seriously Jewish in your lifestyle unless you can recapture that sense of this is a way of connecting with the godliness in you.